Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. All right, today I'm joined by Mickey Theo from Essex. How are you doing, Mickey? Yeah, all good, thank you. Good. Uh, what have you been up to recently? Uh, I think really just doing a bit of work uh, at work. Work at work. A bit of refurbing here and there. Just, uh, yeah, making place it half decent. Yeah. Good man. Have you been a bit of building work. Been training, Mick. Always training, you know me. What have you been? Uh, what have you been doing? Working on today? Today, uh, Sunday today. So um, just done a bit of um, a bit of a bit of, a bit of uh, in the gym, doing a little bit of bag work and a bit of pads and uh, speedball, and you know, it's just a bit of routine today. You've got you've uh, had to you've had a thingy delivered, haven't you? One of them uh, wall. What? Sorry. You've had a wall machine for. Oh, pads are delivered, aren't you? One, one of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Box master. Yeah, are you using it? Yeah, love it. Yeah. Great machine, yeah. How's Noel doing? Is he all right? Noel's great. Everyone's great. I see you up there on the mills and videos you sent me. Six in the morning. You, you must love it, Mick. It's, eh? it's it's life. It's 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 my life, isn't it? It's part of me. It's what I do. Um, you know, it's what I enjoy. So. We you uh? It, we like Rocky, we, we log on back, Mick. <laughs> well, that's what I do when I get to the top of the hill, something I'm running, you know what I mean? I'm, my dog's down the bottom and I always put my arm up, you know what I mean? Yeah. We always say to him up the hill when he's like, looking at me, he's coming running up behind me, you know, he's great, you know. Did you get any uh, snow down your way, Mick? Yeah, we had a bit of snow this morning. Yeah, a little bit. It, weren't, it was more frost than ice, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but just you know what, it's trickling out there now, so um, it's probably more up your way, isn't it? Yeah, so this, we've had a bit of snow up here. Yeah, it's a bit cold. It's like yeah. four today up here in up north, but uh, it's only any good if you're a sheep in it now in field because you've got plenty of water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, have we had, have we heard anything from uh, the big fella? Oh, what well, the slim fella now, isn't he? He's slim, isn't he? Slim, the marathon runner. Marathon runner, have you heard anything? I think from... he's still running somewhere, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's still running somewhere. Um, like I say, you know, we, we put the searches out for him, but no one's found him or seen him. No, um, do you think maybe... that, uh, us up in the reward to five thousand pounds for information leading to the guy who John Fury fought for 100 grand in a bare knuckle? Do you think that putting that out has silenced him because we've not heard a peek out, him, have we really? You can put a million pound out there, it's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. yeah. We know that. We know, don't we? <laughs> All right, then. So, we've not heard anything about John, then. So, we'll move no. on, then. Uh, we'll talk about some boxing. Uh, do you think John's son, Tyson Fury, and Anthony Joshua fight is going to happen this year, Mick? God knows. I don't know. There's a, lot, there's a lot of talk about it. There was last year, isn't there? So, listen, I, I, if it happens, it happens. I mean, you know, it, it will be nice to see it happen. Yeah. Um, but who knows the way things are and, and things, the way things are going. And it's a lot of talk at the moment, isn't it? Like, yeah. like I said before, I think when you asked me the same question back in the day, um, apparently the, it was already made, wasn't it? Uh, by... A big thank you to Daniel Kinahan. It was all made. Uh, Tyson reckons it was made for putting it on and it's all done, dusted. And it looks like it hasn't been done. So um, Eddie's trying to get it on um, <laughs> with with uh, uh, Bob Aram, I suppose, with and Frank's involved as well. So there's, they still ain't made nothing. Done, you know, they've advertised it's going to be done. It's, 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 it's there. It's already done, almost done. This You can never believe what they're saying. It's just typing interest up, isn't it, really? Oh, um, politicians, aren't they? That's what it is, hyping it up, bringing, bringing people on an up, and then a down, and then an up, and a down, and it's like, you know... Uh... Yeah, it's... Uh... So you don't think it's going to happen this year, then, Mick? I don't think it'll happen this year, personally, because, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're in a, a, a deeper pandemic... Um, a stronger one, uh, a more harsher one, a killing one, you can call it. 
uh, uh, there's a lot more numbers going up and a lot more deaths happening right now. So we're in a difficult situation at the moment uh, with this virus going around, you know? I've uh, I've got a theory on it, and I'm going to say it for the last time because I feel like a broken record. Even my kids are like, oh, Dad, not that fight again. But uh, right, Tyson Fury, last fought, last fight. We both agree on that, don't we? Yeah, he beat Wilder for the title. Right? Yeah, so he's been out of the ring 11 months, he hasn't got a date ever since then. There's been legal problems now. Al Heyman and Shelly Finkel, they're big dogs in boxing, they've been at this game years, they've been involved in some of the biggest fights in history. Uh, they've got legal problems. Frank Warren didn't announced the Tyson Fury Caballel fight on the 5th of December and he didn't back down to, to nobody Frank Warren so I'm going to go with the narrative that there's a problem behind the scenes legally right there's a problem that they cannot overcome but they've shot the mouths off that much now it's like for example once you tell a lie you've got to tell another you've got to keep it going you've got to keep the lie going because if they don't well, they're going to lose credibility, aren't they? If they don't make that fight this year, this year they're going to lose credibility. What yeah. they can do to get out of this, out of it, it's really simple. There's, there's two ways they can do it. They can just say, one of them don't want to fight the other one. There's an argument of a money, or they need to do it in England with fans here. That, because of the pandemic, they can't do it. Look, they've got plenty of excuses, or somebody's injured, or whatever. Mm. But... I personally don't think it'll happen. I think there's too many cooks spoiling the broth. There's too many, too many chefs in the kitchen. There's too many people wanting a slice of the cake. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. But I just think that when you've got big personalities and you've got greedy people, I mean greedy. Tyson's greedy, right? Warren's greedy. Aram, greedy men. Joshua's shockingly greedy. He's probably greedy <laughs> for a lot of them. You've got all these greedy people, Eddie and Sky, they're all jostling for their little piece of pie. And there's too many people jostling. I see too, I see, I see too much carnage. I see it like I did Manny Pacquiao, Mayweather. That went on for yeah. too long. But look how many buys it did. It, it still did mega money. And I think we're caught up in that scenario now, whereas you've got to keep spinning it. They've got the platforms, haven't they? They've all got the millions of followers. They've got all the YouTubers hanging out the back of them, the media guys, Sky and, and, and all the Dazon, all these people, they all know that, it's, that we're being messed about. So they've got to drag it out, haven't they, to hype it. But yeah, that's a stage now where why are they coming out saying it was, been, it was done in June? Well, we're February in another week and a half. In fact, we're February um, next Monday, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. So we're February next Monday, and that's him out at ring a year. And still no happened, and it was June, wasn't it, when he came out with that? So it's just people chatting rubbish. Fools, mate, fool. I don't know. What do you think, mate? I think that what, uh, what Wilder's got a fight coming up, isn't it? He's got, um, I forgot who he was fighting. He was mentioned the other day that he's fighting someone. Um, so Charlie Martin. That's the one. Um, maybe for a warm up. I don't know. You wouldn't have him as a sparring partner, mate. But, you and John Fury would but, flog him. But you, you talk like Charles Martin. You and John Fury would flog Charles Martin. He's, he's no. Oh, he's a, a Charles Martin. Listen, Charles Martin should never had. Well, he got the belt handed to him before, and Joshua had an easy win, didn't he? Hey, for Charles. I mean, yeah, he's fucking. He's, he's no good, is he? he? I wouldn't. Even, he's not even worthy. I think Ortiz would be better. The, the better opponent, uh, you know, that give him a good fight. You know, he's picking oh, Charles Martin. He's picking Charles Martin. He's an easy target. He's an easy sparring partner, an easy earner. That's all it is. Ended up on crack, didn't he? Probably, yeah. Crackhead, raging crackhead. Yeah. But, uh, all right, then moving on. Uh, what do you think about Chris Eubank Jr., his promoter, Callis Sauerland, who he's now with, trying to put him in mix with Kel Brook, Beefy Smith? Uh, Canelo, Golovkin, you name it, that the, the, they're trying to get him out there. What do you think about you? Yeah. I, I, is it about time that he started fighting? <clears throat> it is. Um, I don't know much about his manager, but I, 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 yeah, I believe Chris needs to come out and fight. I mean, he's been long enough out of the ring as well. And yeah, listen, there's some, they're all, all them, 
them people that you mentioned, they're great fighters, you know, it'd be great to see any of them fighting, really, um, I believe. Yeah. Uh, all right, let me just let me just point some out to uh, this particular person, you know, keeps uh, chipping away. Is it Captain Kirk who you are? <laughs> Tell me I've got to ask this question and ask that question. I don't need to ask questions like that that <coughs> that not even happen. You shouldn't listen to gossip, Mr. Captain Kirk. But if you do want to ask uh, Mickey any questions, don't use me. Come on the channel on Zoom, and this is what it's for, and you'll get your chance to ask us. We want to have a look at you, don't we? Because you've got plenty to say for yourself. All right. Can so... I just pause you there, Russ? Can I just pause you there? Yeah. He's just full of shit, okay? That's all he is, all right? So don't even talk about him. All right, mate. That's what I doing. wouldn't even have, you on it, have him on the channel, mate. Yeah, yeah? well. What, the, the comments you come out with from him are all bollocks, okay? That's coming from me, okay? Yeah. So if you're listening to this, well, you will be listening to him. Yeah, you're full of shit, mate. Okay, keep your mouth shut. Well, okay, that's, that's a respectable way. That's that sorted. Uh, Christopher Eubank, though, do you think it's a good fight with him and Kelbrook, Mick? Or do you think that... Listen, I like Chris. I think he's a great guy. He's got a great character with him. Yeah. I love him as a fighter, you know. He, he, he's, he's up there. He's good. He's... Um... <sighs> It'd be nice to see how he, uh, since he's been in America fighting uh, and, and training, shall I say, more than fighting. Um, I reckon he's he come back a better person. Yeah. Um, he's got a manager behind him. I think he's listening now. That's all Chris needed to do is listen a little bit and take in, you know, and learn and move forward. And, and he's got the capability to do that. Because um, everything he's done up to now is, is on his own. He's a natural born fighter after his dad, you know. So I, I, do, I do believe he, he, he's got the tools anyway. He's just put them into practice and listening more. All Chris has got to do is listen and move forward and he'll be great. He'll be like victorious. I've heard stories about some at times, you know, them bleep tests that they do, you know, them bleep. Yeah. I've heard uh, some of the scores you were getting on that were like bordering on Olympic you know, his scores were Olympian scores. You know, I believe it. I believe it. He's he, he's that type of guy. I mean, you can see he's very athletic and uh, in what he does. Yeah. I've been down the gym many times and he's been down there. I'm very good friends with Scott and Scott runs that gym down there. And we've been in there and I've seen him spar a few times, you know. Um, unfortunately, he's, he's in a world of his own. He knows or he feels and he knows he can do it on his own which is wrong. He should be having some guidance um, to how to do things. A little bit of a correction and where he's going wrong and put it right. Um, but listen, Chris is his own man. He can do it. But I think if he just listens a bit and humbles a little bit on, on that side of thing and move forward, he would be victorious in, in every department because he's got the tools. Yeah, and I like Chris. He's a great guy. Do you feel that... Uh... <clears throat> Maybe he might have grown up a bit now because he's gone with Roy Jones and he's had his head down last year or so, and he's training hard over there. Do you think that Definitely. Eddie might have dropped? Definitely. 100%. <clears throat> Do you think he would have been harsh on Ronnie Davis? He was too harsh on Ronnie. Poor old Ronnie. I felt sorry for him a few times. Well, I felt sorry for Ronnie as well, did you? Because he's a nice bloke, Ronnie, isn't he? Ronnie Davis, we love you, mate. We, we, we feel sorry for you. <laughs> and, uh... Is he still with him? No, he's not with him. Not with him, he no. probably is still with him when he's, he's, he's over him. He's like an uncle to him, isn't he? But I, I... Yeah, he's, he's family, isn't he? Ronnie's family. Yeah, you know? young Christopher's a bit, ed a bit headstrong a couple of years ago, wasn't he? I think. Listen, he's still young, wasn't he? Now he's, he's getting a bit more mature. Uh, hopefully, he, you know, he's lost all that and moving forward and he's a better person for it. You know what, right? how, uh, <laughs> how it comes across. I agree with Carla Sowlin on this. I don't agree with many things with old Scar uh, what Scarface says, but when he was saying that He's a big draw, Eubank Jr., isn't he? There's something about him, isn't there, that we like, don't we? Chris, I've always liked him. You know, I like his um, his mannerism, his humour, his yeah. um, the way he goes about himself, you know. I think he's a, he's a big character in him, you know. Would you like to see him fight it, Liam Williams? Sorry? Would you like to see him fight Liam Williams? I see a little documentary on Instagram he sent, um, uh, and they were speaking to Chris, and... Uh, they mentioned uh, Williams and he said, who? Never heard of him, which is quite funny. Um, listen, Williams is a great fighter. I like I like him uh, as a fighter. He's a great guy, you know. He's mandatory WBO. Yeah, no, listen, he's got heart. He's got great heart, big heart, 
And yeah, he's he's got the tools, you know. That'd be a great fight, them two. And like he's called him out, hasn't he? He's called Chris out. So you think Beefy Smith and Chris Eubank's a good fight? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good that could be a good fight. Beefy beat Liam Williams twice. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good fight. What about Kel Brook? Do you think he might be damaged goods now? Possibly. I mean, he's, he's a 147 guy. He'd be jumping up to 160. Chris will be coming down from 168. The, we have, we have, so you've got 168, 160, 154. Kel, Kel's going from 147. Missing 154, going 160. Eubank's coming down. We have weight divisions for a reason, aren't we? And these, these sort of fights, and Callis Allen, I don't agree with you on that one. But I'd watch it, but I know that's a bit sadist of me. But I just think that we have fighters are not superheroes, I mean, and we're doing things like they're going to get hurt now. He got hurt against Golovkin, didn't he? And he's he's been hurt in other fights, hasn't he? And I just yeah. think it's a step too far for him, Eubank. And I'd like to see <laughs> Kel retire. From Whoever's behind you know, he's, him, telling him to fight, I think it's a bit out of order. You're talking about weights, Russ. You know, yeah. it's not a lot in it, really, is it, when you think about it? Coming up a few pounds, you know, down a few pounds, you know, we talked about people getting hurt. Personally, I don't think the gap between any, any of the weights, you could damage someone with an extra little bit of weight, you know? Because, oh, you, you know, uh, you, you look at the heavyweights, you know, one's down here, one's up there, you know? Yeah, but Mick, what you're forgetting is <laughs> Kel Brook fought for a welterweight, then he jumped up to 160 for Golovkin. And we know what happened there, don't we? He got his eye socket smashed in, didn't he? Well, yeah, you know, it, 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 very, very rarely that happens, you know. All right, it happened to him that day, but it could happen to... Um, if Golovkin came down to Kel's uh, original weight instead of Kel going up, you know, um, it could happen again, couldn't it? He's it's, it's, it's probably a good puncher, you know? But anyway, that's not no very early there. Yeah, so Chris Eubank Jr., you're going to get behind him and you, you follow his career then, mate. Is that what you're saying? I've always followed Chris. I like Chris. Yes. You know, same, same as, I don't know, I've got a soft, soft spot for Chris. I like him. He's a great guy. Like I say, I've been down there many times and I've uh, seen the father as well. He, they, he, they're all great guys, you know. Um, they got a little team going on down there and it's nice, you know. You know, I do pop down every now and then and... Uh, I might ring Scott and come down there maybe one day and see him. I ain't seen him for ages. Uh, Dylan White against Povetkin. It's rumoured to be in a couple it's of... It's on, isn't it? It's on, like Donkey Kong. Do you feel that it's a crossroads fight for Dylan White, Mick, if he loses? Personally, I don't think he's going to lose. No? I think... Um, Povetkin got that shot in. Okay, shall we say it's a lucky shot? No, it's what he does. Um, I just think Dylan White should have jumped on him, which he didn't last time out, and it would have been game over. Ref would have stopped it. He was so relaxed, so cool about it. That's what come with the shot. That had come come from nowhere. You know, he, he didn't see that coming. That's what knocked him out. If he'd seen it coming, he wouldn't have got knocked out, you know. Yeah. He would have took it, seen it, took it, his body would have like seen it come in and got ready for it. Um, but listen, it is what it is. He got knocked out. Can Povetki do the same again? Yes, he can. He's dangerous. But I think when Povetkin's hurt, if you jump on him, you'll do him. If you let him recover, he'll come back and bite you like he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about... Uh... Canelo signing with Eddie Hearn. Oh, he's with Eddie Hearn, hasn't he? Yeah, obviously he's got two. He's got two fights with him, hasn't he? But yeah, what? he's with Eddie Hearn because you know he knows Eddie can get him the fights, and they, look, Eddie's become the, one of the top promoters now, hasn't he? Well, he is uh, a I think promoter. he's got the top two kids in the world either side at Pond. Yeah, this is what I'm saying because he, because he's there. Canelo knows he can get the fight on, and there's some good fights. Over here with uh, with Canelo, you know, or or to be matched up with Canelo. Yeah. Um. I, I know Billy's trying to get a shot at uh, Canelo. Um. Listen, everyone, forget Canelo. Whatever weight league or division you are, you want to be the best. So you're going to want to fight the best, didn't you? Yeah. Um, 
So that's the way it is. Um, and listen, at the end of the day, we all know it's a money fight. Um, whoever fights Canelo, it's a money fight. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. and if you beat him, poof, sky's the limit. You hit the jackpot. If you can defend, you know, retain your, your, your belts and that, yeah, against your opponents. Do you think that uh, Tom Little will come back and fight? Or do you think he's retired for good now, Tom? Yeah, I think Tom's had his, had his fair share. And, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, game over for him. Capable fighter, Tom, you know. It's just that uh, I just don't think you were dedicated enough. Myself, personally. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's how much you want to put, put into the game, you know. How lazy are you in the morning getting up and running? How, how lazy are you, you know, every morning getting up early and training and, and, and some boxers train three times a day, you know? Yeah. Um, I know when Scott was doing it, he was doing three times a day and I was with him all the time. Um, so determine how, how, how far you want to go in the sport to how early you can get up and how, how you will continue throughout your day motivated uh, to be a champion, you know? What do you think about the situation with uh, Kid Galahad and Josh Warrington at the moment, mate? I don't know too much about that one, to be honest. I haven't really been following it. Well, Warrington's vacated his belt and, and uh, it looks like Galahad's going to fight Dickens uh, for vacant belt. So the same, but I don't, I don't think nothing's in concrete yet, but uh, that's the word. Anyway, I'd, I just feel that uh, Eddie Hearn's not delivered for Warrington, but do you feel that there's other people who Eddie Hearn's not delivered for? You know, in his match unstable, you know, like John Ryder, Josh Warrington, Billy Joe, Huey Fury, Callum, uh, Callum Smith, Callum Johnson, Beefy. Well, yeah, but I mean, Huey's had a couple of fights, hasn't he, in the last few months? So he's he's got he's got a couple of fights out of him, hasn't he? Um, uh, Billy, yeah, he's only had one fight. Um, I mean, really, he should have had a couple of fights by now. So, but you can say that for a lot of boxers, can't you? In this pandemic, there's there's a lot of boxers out there that ain't had a fight, you know. Um, I think we're talking about the people, the ones we know of, that are the regulars we we see fighting. Um, but there's a lot of pros out there. Listen, it's their game. It's where they make their money, their bread and butter. And a lot of them are just not fighting um, because of the pandemic. They just want to put a show on with the the, the best that they've got at the moment, or they can, that they can make money out of. Yeah. You know, why put a show on with people you ain't going to make money out of? You, you want to put the, the top people up there that, that would de deliver and make the money. Um, why sign the people if you're not going to get them fights? Then has he signed them to keep them away from Frank Warren? Because. Well, there's that as well, isn't there? There's that to it as well, because if he don't sign them up and they're good, Frank will take them. It's, it's, it's a vicious circle, isn't it? Yeah, but let's just, just go through the list that I've just had there. Right? Eddie's supposed to be the number one guy. Well, he is the number one promoter in world boxing. Billy Joe's got two world titles at home. Eddie didn't get him in. Frank did. Josh Wannington's a world champion. Eddie couldn't get him it. Frank got him world title. Yui Fury, Eddie's not got him the fights he wants. Callum Smith, Calla Sowland got him his world title. Callum Johnson, he hadn't got him rematch with Beta Beef. Uh, who else were there? Beefy Smith, Frank Warren got him his belt, but Eddie, Eddie's got Beefy Smith now. So these are all Eddie Earn fighters. John Ryder, he didn't get him rematch with Callum Smith. So all these people here, they all look to me like they're parked up. There's something going on, and I can't. That's a, have a good that's idea. answers your question, Russell. That's a, a, what you've just said is answers your question. Okay, Frank's got them all there. Yeah. Frank does an amazing job, yeah. He's he knows how to school a boxer on and get him to where they want to get him to the belts. Yeah. And now ask yourself this question: why are they all moving over to Eddie Young? Because he's the number one promoter. That's the only thing. They think that he'll get him a money fight because that's what he does. He hasn't though, has he? So, well, exactly. I mean, why has uh, Billy Joe gone over to Eddie Young? Probably because you were frustrated with not getting the Canelo fight and Golovkin fight. We further back, he's got the Canelo as he's got him now for the next two three, two fights. As you go, he had three. I think he's got two left. No, so, no, no Canelo. Surely, mate, mate, you're missing point, mate. Canelo fights Yildirim next, right? 
And then Eddie's got one fight left with Canelo. That's Who's going to match him up with? It's got to be Billy Joe. If not, we might as well pack up and go home, won't we? Yeah. There's some fundamental problem why Billy Joe don't get the the the, the fight. Uh, well, listen, Billy Billy deserves a shot at that because he's he who's managed to treat to fight him after that. What's he going to do? Try and wait while Canelo gets old? He's same age as Billy. Yeah, that's, that's true. He might be waiting for Golovkin to get old. I just think it's frustrating for fans that we're being told. Oh, I mean, if Canelo Saunders doesn't happen this year and Fury. Joshua doesn't happen this year. Who's to blame if them two fights don't happen? Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn, isn't it? But he's mm. spinning narrative. He's the one controlling the narrative. These people insert themselves into every every trending story. I'm not going to mention the guy's name, bless him, because he's died, but somebody down your way died the other day. And everybody... Yeah, is, I heard. Yeah. You know him? Uh, oh, of him. Um, yeah, a friend of mine knew him very well. He dealt with him quite a bit with a few things. Yeah. Well, he, he, you're talking about you talk, talking about the Essex boy guy. Yeah, the the, the nightclub owner. Or yeah, Mickey. Nightclub owner. Yeah. Well, well, I'm saying the amount of a people. A of mine sort of does, does his scars for him, sells and buys and sells his scars for him. Well, the so amount of people that were in, exerting themselves into the conversation on social media about it were unbelievable. Uh, people who should know better. And now, and, and everything I said in that video over there, I know people can say, Porky, that's harsh. No, it isn't. You've got people now coming out in the newspapers this weekend from that tower, you know, that load of crap down there, saying that mm. they need counselling and all this and putting them, inserting themselves into the newspapers about about a situation like that because some poor lads died, uh, some poor chuffs died. I, mm. I can't get my head around that. Is this how desperate it's becoming now for people to stay relevant? It just it just it just yeah. really yeah. Up, you know. I knew the other. I mean, the other guy that Mike, the young guy, the Greek guy that passed away, he took his own life. I knew him. He came up to my shop funny enough. We were refurbed some wheels for he had. And like he was talking to me, like um, you know, did your, did your missus watch the telly and all that business? And does she watch this? Does she, you know, he's basically pumping himself up a little bit, you know, promoting himself a little bit. And um, that Mike uh, Tassilu or something, the, he was the one that took his life in, out of the only ways as it. Oh, I don't um, know him. That's, that's another one. Did he take his life? I thought his name was Mickey Norcross. No, that was the one that died the other day. There's another there was one. another one called Michael. Um, it was a Greek guy. I forgot his surname. And, uh, you know, he was up there in that division. And uh, unfortunately, he took his life. But he actually came down to my garage and we had a good old chat. He was a nice guy, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, good looking boy. Um, he had it all going for him. And, like, I, I, honestly, Russ, I think they're on that gear out there, mate. And he fucks their head up and, you know, sends them a bit wonky. And mm. I don't know. It just uh, it does something to their mind, doesn't it, and their brains? Because you know, it's in yeah. Essex, they're they're all on it in Essex, mate. Fucking, they're all on the gear. You know what I mean? I, I don't just, know. It's, it's, when I used they to worship take, it. When I used to take cocaine, Mick, I just used to stick my head. I'd be just like, I like looking at it, blinds all that, and I'd be like, what was that? <laughs> Par paranoid. What was that? Did you hear something then? What was that? Oh, oh well, I'd have X-ray hearing, but I'm glad them days are over for me, man. But I don't know. Yeah, when I it, affects, it affects people different, doesn't it? You know, I think it's sad, Mick, and I think that uh, it's sad. It's sad. My condolences go out to the families of uh, them two people. But all right then. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for women's, to you. Box, uh, women's boxing, Mick. Where do you women's see? boxing? Yeah. Is there going to be three minute rounds or two minute two minute rounds? Some women <laughs> saying they can do the three minutes, and the board are saying now we're going to keep it at two. What do you think about that, Mick? Well, I believe. Well, yeah, I mean, I do believe they can do a three-minute rounder. But listen, it'd be nice to keep it too. The ladies at the end of the day, we know them as females, don't we? Um, I, my decision, it would be two-rounder. It'd be a bit easy for them. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit... Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, if you get a fighter on back foot like Terry Harper, right... Two minute round, they've only got to land a jab and they get on the bike and they kill it round, aren't they? And nothing's happening in the fight. 
And mm. I, I find it hard to get behind stuff like that unless I've got there's a big puncher in there, like Savannah Marshall. She's a massive, freakish puncher. And I like to see She's her. unbelievable. She's unbelievable, man. She is unbelievable. She's like a machine, mate. You know, you want to see some at times she does in circuit. Listen, I was shocked. I was shocked how she fought, how she boxes. Wow. Yeah. You know? She's got every skill in book. Amazing. Fighting seven styles. She's been taught seven styles, you know, like Tyson. Tyson's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like she's great. She's great. She gets, she's 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 going to the top, mate. She is. Yeah, she's already a world champion, so she's already. At yeah, but she 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 will be there for a long time. Yeah, I hope so. Well, so do I. All right then, mate. Well, just a, just a quick chat today. Have you got anything to say to John Fury before we uh, part? Uh, John Fury, Mickey Fiorio, I want you with some of that. So. Still waiting for you, mate. We'll still be talking to, about you. Yeah, we'll still be calling you out, and I'm still calling you out, and it's 2021. Um, all I'm saying, John, let's move forward. It's the for great cause, NHS, especially in this whammy-bammy pandemic we're in. Be a man. Come out of that shell. Come on the channel. Let's get, give what the fans want, and let's give them especially a fight that they, they want to see. So what I've got to say to you, John, Stop biting, open up, come out. I'm ready for you. Mick, would you be worried if you heard that John were training like a tro Trojan or like a Spartan? Please, Very don't much. say that. Don't say that, please. Would you be worried? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Mick, what would you do if John Fury knocked on your front door now? We'd have to see when it happens, if it happened. What would you do if you pulled in for a car wash and said, I'd have to, I'd have to me a car, car wash. wash, inside and out. It's John Fury, ah, this man in world. X-rated. I'm X-rated. I'm the best. What would you do if John Fury turned up at your car, car wash place? And I feel I'd have to hose him down. <laughs> <laughs> would you hose him down? Definitely. I'd fucking hose him down. Would you him, Mikko, would you... Arrange I'd hose him down. Would you? He couldn't. He couldn't get at me with the pressure hoses we got. I'd hose him down, mate. What about his dosser mate who came to see you that day? Uh, what were he in? Uh, what, listen, what, he's, what he's, 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 listen. On, honestly, he was all right. That guy. Right. Listen, he, he's just a normal. He's just a travelling guy. He's a lovely guy. Listen, I didn't even charge him that day. I said, "Look, this one's on me." You know what I mean? I met him about a month before he came to me. And um, he spotted me straight away in this restaurant. And like I said, he came up and said, all the geese are fighting John Fury. I said, no, no not, not me, mate. You know, he had a glass screen up there. And I said, no, not me. No. Everyone says that. Well, I'm really sorry, but you look very decorous. So he went away, come back about 20 minutes later, and he went to me like that. And I said, come here. I said, yeah, I am. Like, ah. Put his arms around me, you know, and um, took me next door. And he gave the, the, the phone to his missus, you know, take the video of us. And then all he can come up with is, I think John Fury is going to fucking bat you. I said, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Mm. You know? But um, I think John Fury's... Um, what do you want me to call him? I've called him all the lovely names, like Funky Chicken, Lost His Arse, No Bottle, Cow. He's a coward, the guy. That's what he is. He's a coward. He's a big man. Like in one of his videos, you know, you should beg your pardon when you're walking past being John Fury, you know. And the guy didn't know what was going on, you know what I mean? You know, he picks on people he knows he can he can he can beat and he can talk down to. Yeah. So I'm not having a game, John. I'm just telling you how you are and what you're all about, mate. So listen, you're the ex pro, I'm a nobody, yeah. You reckon you're the artist out there. I see you on the video one day just you calling Dana White out. It's a challenge, mate. I'm challenging you for a fight. Simple. And you got no fucking ball. And that's the way it is. Yeah? It's embarrassing because I speak to a lot of travelling boys down my way and they just, they've got no fucking love for you anymore. But the people that lick arse, they don't even know you. They're just fucking dreamers behind back doors, closed doors. Yeah, they don't, they're uh, hallucinating, thinking that, you know, you'd smash me, you'd do this. To me. Well, look, if you're going to, if you, if you believe you can beat me or smash me or whatever you can do to me, come out and fight. It's simple, isn't it? Yeah. I know what I can do to you. And that's it. Yeah. All right, then, mate. You might take me out, John. You know, good luck to you if you do, but come out and prove it, mate, because you ain't got no arsehole, mate. 
you need like you say you need a pair of knackers yeah to get move forward and take someone or you challenge someone i'm challenging you no one else to challenge you oh there was the rambo the Ram, look, make, make a phone call. Rambo will come up and serve you up your place, mate. It's not a problem. He'll put you in the back garden. He don't need a belt. I, mean, I don't want a belt. I'm just doing it for charity. Just proving that I'm a better person than you. You're in doing the ring. mental health, aren't you? Make it mental health charity. And well, <clears throat> we are, we've added the mental health to it, yes, because I think that's a good cause. Because you don't realise the amount of people out there that have or gone through this mental issue, you know? Um like his son Tyson, I mean, you know, fucking hell, he's, he's done amazing, isn't he? His son, uh, what he's gone through and what he's become and what he is today, you know? It's all about motivation at the end of the day, you know? Get your head straight, get it moving right like like he's done. He's done an amazing job. And, you know, he's, a, he's an ambassador, ambassador for, for that sort of game, you know what I mean? Um, so, great. Yeah, so that'd be a great thing, like I said before. I don't care where the money goes to, you know? NHS, mental health, young kids, disabled kids, it can go to the best charities out there. But I need you, John, to get it on so these kids can get, uh, the mental kids can get it, uh, the deprived kids can get something in life. And you can help me get give these, you know, kids and ill people out there, and the NHS especially, what they're going through now. So come forward, John, let's do it for good cause. Get on Paulie's channel, let's say your bit. Let's give the fans what they want to hear and move forward. Simple. It's a challenge. That is all it is. Because I believe I'm better than you. Mick, have you got anything to say to John's little cult club? that will comment on the comment section, not videos. John's who? John's little club, little cult. Who will leave the comments on these videos. Have you got? <laughs> I don't know really. Have you been getting any bad comments lately? Oh. Some, some any phone calls? Any any anything? A bit quiet, is it? Bit quiet. Nobody. I, the only pipes up when I interview you. <laughs> well, listen. If, if if it's been quiet, they're, they're listening to what we're saying then, which is nice. You know, you guys that are listening, that are not making silly comments and not threatening people. That's very nice of you. I keep it that way. It's 2021. Listen, there's a lot of people dying out there every every day. Yeah, with this pandemic. So, just think to yourself. Thank God it ain't one of you. Yeah. Mm. That's what you got to say to yourself. Just make sure you're safe. All of you, make sure you're safe. Mask up, glove up, and use the back antibacterial scrub yeah, or whatever you need to do. something to a couple of people in the comments section. The guy who was pretending to be Lee Frotch. Lee Frotch, isn't even, that ain't even his account because I speak to him all the time. So that's not Lee Frotch's account. So why would you pretend to be Lee Frotch? I don't get that, do you? There's, a, there's another Mick Theo out there, isn't there? But, there's another you know, there's Mickey Theo comments on here. Yeah, there you go. You can't even spell my name right. He keeps putting P O R K I E for Porky instead of P O R K Y. I mean, it's there. Look, that's how you spell it. Did you go to school? I mean, uh, what about that one that were terrorizing Eddie Earn? He was pretending to be Mike Costello, you know, the Radio 5 Live commentator. I mean, yeah. if you're going to pretend to be somebody, why don't you do it for Floyd Mayweather or some of uh, Oh, Donald Trump, but Mike Costello. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know, but uh, who's the other one who's plenty to say for himself? I've asked you to come on channel. Super Knuckler. You've plenty to say for yourself, but you won't come on Zoom like all other ones. You see, these people who have plenty to say for themselves, I always say, well, come on channel. Nobody ever does. The ones who come on the channel, boom, 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 I give them respect me. They're genuine people who come on. Some people know a lot more than others. There's people who know a lot more than me. But some people have plenty to say for themselves. But when I say, come on, channel, they go, Aah! they feel the nappy. And I have a problem with that. So why comment That's... if you're not prepared to come on Zoom and front it out? Because they're hiding in their, in their little back offices, bedrooms, or whatever you want to call it, you know. They've got nothing else better to do. They just want to sneak a little something in and done. <clears throat> So, yep. all right then, mate. Well, listen, be great to have you on, and uh, keep in touch, and we'll we'll move forward. And hopefully, John might say, "Do you know what? I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight that Mickey Theo. I'm going to fight him." So he might he might come out and I don't know, just agree to it. And, and in the coming month, but at this moment in time, it's it's looking a bit grim, isn't it, for the next few months? 
Anyway, John Fury, I'm still here. I want to fight. What are you waiting for? You bottle job. Where'd you get that top from, Mick? This top, I can't remember where I got it from. Um, one of the shops. So. Has it got a yellow um, front arm? Sorry? What's it, what, what make is it? Stone Island? Yeah, they, they normally come on the arms on the side sometimes or on the top. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. listen, it'd be nice to get the fire on. But anyway, um, last thing to say, you guys out there, just stay safe. It is a, it's a cracking pandemic out there. It's a powerful one. Yeah. And like I'm, I'm hearing, uh, you know, every day people are dying. So listen, take care of yourselves, everyone. Till next time, I'm hey, out. Paul. All right, mate, you take care. Cheers, pal. Take care, Paul. God bless you, mate. Well, that was Mickey Theo from Essex. I enjoyed that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Leave a nice comment. Don't leave one where, where your tongue is hanging out the back of John Fury because he wouldn't do that for you, would he? All right. Oh, you gimps from Gimpville Island. Peace out. <laughs>